Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. In this video, I break down the PU monthly report so you don't have to. Before we begin, I would just like to say a big thank you to Jim for becoming my latest patron and to Michael for upping his pledge. Your support is all very much appreciated. And if you do enjoy my content and would like to make it even better, be sure to check the links in the description below. So, the monthly report, let's get on with it. Kicking off with AI, the Combat AI team focused on refactoring the cover system, allowing the AI to better evaluate the environment and better construct cover surfaces and locations. The aim is to simplify the environment and build consistent cover, which means that designers can mark objects as elements to be considered by the AI as cover, even potentially turning multiple objects into one cover object. It'll be interesting to see how intelligent the AI do become, especially once the server frame rate starts running at a good reasonable amount and they don't all start glitching out. They've also worked on new combat tactics for holding positions and began investigating the work required to introduce the reloading mechanic to NPCs. For ship AI, they spent time addressing bugs with the implementation of new 3D collision avoidance system. This system enables additional combat maneuvers to be developed to add flair to the dogfighting AI. In particular, focus was on defensive maneuvers, so retreating and fleeing. This tells the AI ship to prioritize shaking off attackers to reduce chances of being hit. Also, they have done additional work to formation flying and preliminary work began on capital ship behaviors and standard dogfighting activity. Also, various fitness behaviors were developed for New Babbage. Currently, there are nine warm-ups and six exercises. And around New Babbage, you will see people jogging, mountain climbing, doing twists, push-ups, sit-ups, planks, leg raises, and burpees. The team also spent time polishing the bartender, which apparently will debut at Lawville. Uh, and he can provide you with bottled smolts, which is a beer, draft beer, and whiskey and coke drinks. The release stream was also stabilized and bugs were fixed for 3.9. I'm actually surprised to hear that the bartender is debuting at Lawville. I honestly thought he would be at New Babbage uh, at Warridge Bar, but it makes no difference. As soon as we do get 3.9, I say we jump in on stream and have a bar citizen in-game where we all meet up and grab some drinks live on Twitch. So make sure you're following me to come and hang out. For animations, alongside body dragging, they began looking at the visual fidelity of the effort set to get the heavier weight and feel to it, currently scheduled for 4.0. I expect it'll look pretty realistic, this body dragging system. It applies both to the bounty hunting and medical career, being able to drag your comrade to a safe location before treating him, but I'm looking forward to getting that in-game. Now, there is a quote, and it says... We've also worked on some shocking good animations for some new FPS weapons coming soon. To me, this sounds like the Lightning Bolt weapon series. It's kind of obvious. On the combat AI side, they have created assets and graphs for reloading and weapon malfunction animations. They've created animations for work zones, which include data pads and multi-tool use and supported eating and drinking. So basically around landing zones, you'll see people interacting with data pads using their multi-tool, people who look like they should be using them, like workmen and so forth, as well as people eating and, and drinking, of course. For environment art, the team worked on the first two planets of the pyro system, alongside various other environments. New landscapes, terrain, geology shapes, and vegetation are all being explored and worked on with a huge amount of excitement, and I'm not surprised. It is absolutely incredible to hear that they are cracking on with pyro now, Pyro is a completely new system. We we have Stanton at the moment, and once that's complete, that'll be four planets, 12 moons. Pyro is going to be a complete contrast to Stanton, being a lawless system. I cannot wait to see how the system looks. Hopefully, we will start seeing some updates as soon as possible. Uh, I will definitely do a video looking at Pyro to see what it could bring in terms of gameplay and exciting things. Anyway, the ship art team has spent time polishing the Prowler. They've further developed the M50's cockpit and exterior to align with Origin's latest style. If you watch my roadmap update, this has slipped into 4.0, unfortunately. The Cutlass Blue prisoner pods were also iterated on to appear more prisoner containment-like, whatever that may mean. Anyway, on the weapon art, they have iterated on the lightning bolt sniper rifle and pistol. After getting some feedback, tweaks were made to the iron sights and the player's holding position was adjusted, plus various bug fixing and polishing tasks were completed. It says in preparation for a 3.9 release. Now, these two weapons are not supposed to come until 4.0. 
Have they been brought forward to 3.9? Was this sentence a mistake? I expect it was just a mistake and we'll see them in 4.0. But if they do come in 3.9, then, you know, it's a benefit nonetheless. For audio, they spent most of the time on New Babbage with new music from Pedro Camacho that actually changes as the day-night transitions. They've completed work on the player status system audio, the Asperia Prowler, ambient sounds for prisons, and they've fixed a handful of bugs. Bug fixes from the audio team are very important as it really stands out um, if the audio isn't correct, even to the point of being dangerous if you don't know what is actually happening to you because the audio isn't firing. Anyway, for the backend services, they have been bug fixing and tweaking existing features and optimizing services. Currently, they're testing and tweaking the various parts of the iCache and are prepping to migrate several legacy services to the new model. I just want to hear more about the iCache and obviously when can we expect it, which they're not going to tell us, but that sounds amazing. Cannot wait to see that. The character team apparently was focused on an upcoming event. No idea what this means. No idea why the character team are involved. A model was also finished, it says, that marks the beginning of some interesting work for a future PU release. So my thoughts personally, I'm thinking maybe the Imperator voting, something along those lines. Do let me know what you think. That's just my opinion, but I don't know what this upcoming event could be. The engineering team implemented a way to trigger story scenes and conversations in a more lifelike manner, such as distance and time. For example, if the player is in the field of view of a character, it says work continues on physics threading and performance. There's a lot of information there that I won't go through because I don't know, I don't have a clue what it all means, uh, but they've also added driven ragdoll support for body dragging, gravity adjustments to actor entity ground tracking, per joint driven ragdoll stiffness, and impulse to the root of the tracking driven ragdoll. Again, body dragging, lots of information here. It sounds like it's gonna be very realistic giving weight to the bodies, be them dead bodies or incapacitated bodies. A lot of work has been done on the Vulcan renderer mesh API. A lot of skinned foliage was found to be missing leaves, which has been fixed before being given to the object container splitting physics voxel grids. Moving on to gameplay features, they worked through the final stages of the friends list refactor. There's still testing to do, but the initial phase is on the schedule for 3.9. This includes a new party window, the ability to right click on contacts and join sessions with any online contact, presence indicator to show what part of the game contacts are playing and whether they're available to party up, a join leader button, which allows the player to connect with another pilot on any server as well. Now, a quote from them, not word for word, I've shortened it a little bit. It says, They understand how much of a pain partying up is and felt it was important to rebuild the entire experience from the ground up. They're certain it'll still have a few rough edges, but it should be a massive improvement over what it was and they want to get it into our hands sooner rather than later. They will 100% look for feedback to see where it goes from here. I just hope that it works really simply and easily so that we can just group up quick without having to really think about it. Now they've added a quick buy option to use the smaller handheld items so you don't need to use a Moby Glass. I think that really applies more to food and drink around landing zones. Also several critical bug fixes for 3.9 were fixed and they also supported prison implementation. So for the vehicle features team they supported the release of the Prowler and Focus is now on the 3.9 improvements to sub-targeting. Hopefully we get more in way of that for 3.9. They've also continued to work on converting all the ship hoods to use the building blocks and further up, uh, developed IFCS. The building blocks for all the hoods should hopefully come around on around 4.0. Very excited to see that. Now in regards to the IFCS, there's a quote that says lots of things happening regarding the flight model with thruster efficiency curves being finalized, tested and improved. This work also necessitated a new aerodynamic model, which they're ironing out now and getting ready to convert a lot of the ships to use. This is excellent news. I know the aerodynamic model isn't all that great. I know the space flight model isn't all that great, but I, it looks like they're having to focus on one. No idea if this is for 3.9. I really hope it is. Fingers crossed, but it could be a little later on. Maybe it could even be an interim patch. I do wonder if this is using the sign distance field tech that they mentioned a little while ago for atmospheric flight. Hard to believe it is, but we'll see. 
Anyway, the graphics team have continued doing crucial work on the Vulcan renderer, converting the existing volumetric fog system and debug tools to the new system. They've also investigated how to improve the legibility of holographic and transparent UI screens in extremely bright or dark environments. Several color approaches were also investigated. It is very difficult to read our UI at the moment with the different brightnesses, especially around Microtech. So anything to improve the readability of screens and UI will be very much appreciated. So the lighting team have spent most of the time optimizing New Babbage for 3.9, focusing on the cost of shadows by balancing the highest possible quality with the frame rate. The new day-night light states received constant refinement to ensure transitions were believable uh, and prevent too much darkness. I think this is re regarding the locations of buildings and so forth around planets that as they transition between day and night, their lighting comes on or off. Uh, I think that's what they're regarding there. Also, lots of work for prison lighting has been done, making it feel natural, diverse uh, and leading the player where they want them to. So narrative team are getting 3.9 ready for release, like writing descriptions for food, drink and clothing. Additional mission polish was done and a new law was crafted to cut down on pad ramming. Hopefully that works. Uh, they also began looking at several upcoming star systems to provide details on flora, fauna, points of interest and gameplay scenarios players may encounter. Now this sounds great. Cannot wait to see what they've been looking at. Could we begin to see fauna make it into the game? I really hope so. The props team had focus on the new items and locations for new Babbage like food, drink and clothing. Also setting up the shops plus time was spent on bug fixing and polishing 3.9. For the QA team it says object container splitting and physics grid changes made their way into Alpha 3.9 and subsequently affected the ATC or air traffic controller functions across all landing zones. So this basically means that the landing and landing requests should behave more as they are intended to as they are now within their own object container. Now to me obviously object container splitting and the physics grids this applies definitely to the whole series and allowing them to expand and contract not saying we're getting the whole series for 3.9, obviously docking is still required before we can even consider getting the whole series in. But could this apply to the ability to maybe spawn ships inside ships, like a Karak having the Pisces and the Ursa rover inside? Anyway, for combat AI, the QA team have been focused on newly implemented missions and expanding the combat testing to assess how NPCs react to multiple players and how they will use cover when flanked. The AI is going to be tough. Yeah, I think teamwork is definitely a necessity going forwards. For the ship AI, their tests continue on dogfighting, security and civilian ships with emphasis on the 3D navigation system in asteroid belts and clusters. Tech animation team are refactoring the in-house facial rigging and animation suite. This is to support next-gen content with the flexibility and modular approach to its code base and rigging platform, which will ultimately be used to further refine the existing facial rigs and create all new ones. I think this is a lot to do with how CIG will be able to keep up the quality bar by future-proofing their tech, allowing them to iterate over time if need be. Anyway, the team also helped implement animations to bring the creation of a new tool set to help visualize and apply animation sets to the animation tool suite. This helps the team create and preserve animation state machines, which is required for the complex AI behaviors players are awaiting in the verse. They also further refined the rigging toolset to support the vast number of upcoming props. It is now apparently robust enough to enable a streamlined approach to authoring new animation rigs. Turbulent, it says, have worked on several as yet unannounced projects. No idea what all this is all about. Uh, and then for visual effects, they worked on the Prowler, new Babbage and Prisons, uh, destruction effects for the Volatile Cargo, Visor Frost was updated to correctly use the Frost Amount set, which hopefully makes the build up more realistic. I personally, I'm just waiting for a kind of Metro style Visor Wipe to clean off the, the condensation just for a time, little time so that you can see what you're doing. Uh, also, Sign Distance Field Atmospheric Entry effects were completed and are ready to be rolled out to all the vehicles in a future release. So, most likely not 3.9. And finally, pre-production R&D continued for the fire component. Wow, some really interesting juicy bits in there. So happy to hear about the object container splitting and physics grid stuff and that the iCache is definitely well underway. It is only a matter of months till we see the benefits, I'm sure, 
Uh, one huge exciting bit of news is that Pyro is progressing, which is incredible to hear. Anyway, what a month CIG has had. Hopefully we will get some video updates soon on all of this exciting content that they're cracking on with. But with that said, make sure you hit subscribe for all of this new Star Citizen content coming thick and fast. Hit the like button if you're excited for 3.9. Tick the notification bell so you know when my videos go live. And come and hang out with us over on twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.